Hello everybody, how are you? So my name is Anne Salim and I'm here together with my colleague Washira. He shall introduce himself later. And uh, today, I'm going to be talking about... A heuristic approach to hands-on learning. Um, I shall break it down slowly as I begin, uh, but the whole idea is my background is in IT and uh, for a long time I wanted to change how we are currently learning in Kenya. I think if you're like me and you went to school, you feel like uh, uh, school is a little bit like this. We're all very different, but we're all examined in the same way, you know? I mean, some of us have different talents. Some of us have talents in music. Some of us have talent in the art. But when we come to school, we're just examined the same way. We are examined in whether we pass maths, English, geography, history, you know, social studies. And it leaves a lot to be desired. And so everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, then it will fail, fill its whole life believing it is stupid, you know? And so... I'm curious, uh, I want to share with you how uh, one of the programs we've been running has taken a different approach to how we transfer knowledge to children. But first I want to give you a little bit of a background about IHUB, that is the organization I'm from. Uh, we were started in 2010 and uh, we are a community, a co-working space, so that is the space where the community is. And the idea is we want to develop the local technology community in Kenya. We want to make it easier for people to know what Kenyans are building with regards to technology, where to find them, how to find them, to know what they're working on. And so, as I have stuff, uh, I think our three main goals are to connect people. So through the community space, we're able to bring in diversity of people from not just in Kenya, but across the world. We try and support startups, and these are young organizations that are just coming up, people who have uh, business ideas that are focusing on how to use technology to solve a particular problem. And how we do that is we have a membership system where we provide them with a co-working space. We have a lot of events and trainings, and uh, people are able to collaborate together in that space. Finally, the department that Washira and I are from is called iHub Research, and uh, the idea is to surface, surface information on what's happening in the technology scene, not just in Kenya, but across Africa. So far, we've done work in the region, in East Africa, and also in West Africa. So, moving on to EdTech. Um, I studied business information technology, and whenever we got assignments, uh, I was curious to build education systems, systems that would help uh, people in schools have an easier time. I think you know with free education, the number of students in the classrooms has grown immensely, and you could have one teacher to like stick to students. And that means the resources are limited. There's limited space to work from. There's limited books and textbooks. There's so many challenges. But then on the other hand, technology can help a lot. It can provide a vast amount of resources in a small device. So I was keen to look at how uh, people are using technology for learning in Kenya. Um, people are using devices like laptops, mobiles, uh, e-readers, Kindles, iPads, uh, PCs for teaching. <laughs> In Kenya, I, I know with the current government, we are, we are familiar with the phrase digital government and digital learning and how we're going to bring computers for schools. But nobody is telling you the story of what's happening. There are some challenges in implementing bringing technology to Kenya. It's more than just a device. And so using technology is making a shift from just learning for the sake of passing exams because we have the national exams to think about, KCPE, KCSE, and in campus, you know, you want to pass. But more than just passing the exams, you want to learn to gain knowledge. You want to make children start thinking, start being creative. And so that's what I was looking into. Uh, there's a popular saying that we have paraphrased that uh, Ken Robinson once said, we are born to creativity but taught out of it, <laughs> you know? So that's just something to think about. Um, oops, uh, one second. Uh, so I give you a little bit of an example. So some of our community members have built mobile systems that can help people revise for KCP. And one of the platforms is Eneza Education, which you can see with a mobile device. 
One of the other applications that is quite popular is Elimu, where they provide all the Kenyan curriculum in one tablet. And then the students are able to learn, watch interactive videos. Uh, this is a picture of a school in Pika where the kids have this laptop program. And uh, what they're doing is they're learning through, there's a software which enables them to read English, uh, maths and science. And so they're able to learn on the computer one to one. Other programs that have been around for a long time include one laptop per child uh, that's been implemented in many parts of Kenya, but the bigger challenges were sustaining the programs. Key things I want you to take away is um, when you build a program or when you implement a program in an area, you have to think about how to maintain it, how to sustain it. You have to think about constantly checking whether it's working for the users and not just the children, but you're looking at the teachers and the administrators. These are just some of the things that need to be documented. And sadly, there's very little documentation on how people are using technology for learning in Kenya, yet it's happening a lot. So now to talk about our program. Um, our program looks a little bit like this. <laughs> we shall expand. Uh, it's called the Kids Hacker Camp Stroke Waza Experience. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of hands-on learning. And so now, I'd like to welcome my colleague Washira to tell you a little bit more about it. Thank you. Hi, sorry, uh, technical difficulties. Um, hi, I'm Washira, um, and uh, I am Anne's colleague as well. Um, and a lot of what I've been helping her with is with the Kids Hacker Camp. Uh, now, the Kids Hacker Camp is, up until today, it's been a five to six day camp that we've been holding at iHub in Nairobi that teaches kids different things from uh, how to use um, you know, a computer to how to write software to making small robots for each other collaboratively as well. Um, and it started in uh, August of 2013. Um, this is just a general picture we took last year. Um, it pretty much just shows what we're trying to foster. The community of you know people, young and old. We have parents in there. We have young kids as young as six years old, but all coming together for one thing, and that's to help improve education, right? And particularly with Kitaka Camp, we're looking at extracurricular education, education that happens outside of the classroom. Um, uh, this is a bit of a background. Uh, the first camp was held uh, from the 26th to the 31st of August, 2013. Um, that was my first month there. Uh, I was a fresh intern. Uh, I was told, okay, fine, go ahead, do the Kids Hacker Camp. Um, and it went really well. Um, we'll show you some stats later on in some future slides. Um, and the curriculum content uh, and activity plans is developed and collaboratively put together by our team at iHub Research. So like Anne mentioned earlier, we, part, we have formed part of uh, iHub Research, which is a department within iHub. And it's pretty much a team of uh, 11 researchers all sitting down working on various fields. Um, up to now, we've had uh, 100 children who participated in the camps uh, with 50 university level students becoming camp mentors. And what this means is that we don't actually get the kids together and teach to them. We don't do this. There's never a situation where the kids sitting down and there's someone at the front talking. We get university students from Jomo Kenyatta University, University of Nairobi, uh, Deren Kimadi University, all these various universities from around, not just Nairobi, but its environs, to come in and they pretty much try to teach the things as they'd like them to be taught. So to empathize with the situation that the kids are in. Um, myself, I'm an engineer, and I can tell you for a fact, that was, for me growing up, you had to cram more than you had to understand. We're taught to pass exams, but not really to understand our environment or the things that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and this is the backstory, which is part of what I'm telling you. Um, which is, tell me and I forget. It's a quote by Benjamin Franklin. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And this just goes to show that you don't necessarily teach someone, you don't necessarily get someone to understand something to its core by giving it to them and saying, hey, go ahead, use it. We don't believe that if you... The digital uh, education project by the government is great, but you don't believe that's the solution. You believe you really have to get people to the point where they could do it for themselves, um, which is part of what this quote tries to push forward. Um, our objectives, um, as part of the camp organizers, 
is one, to develop core competencies in the five C's. And the five C's, if I remember them correctly, are communication, collaboration, curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking. That's all, right? Yeah. Um, and they pretty much try to cover all the soft skills that you don't only need professional-wise, but also on a personal level. It's always good to be able to communicate your ideas. And this is TEDx, if you're trying to build ideas that are worth spreading, but be able to put them forward into the world and be confident about having put them there. Um, so that's pretty much the first point. Second point is to increase exposure to STEAM principles. Uh, now, STEAM principles are a pretty much, they're a new age way of thinking about education. Uh, up until now, we've been working on uh, the three R's, which is uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic, which is pretty much the basis of all education systems around the world. Uh, but STEAM looks at proposing that we need to work on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, having all the bases so that you create a holistic education experience. Um, so that's the second one. The third is to catalyze the development of wholesome, cross-cutting relationships. And this one is more, it's, we believe that this is where a lot of the power lies. Because we don't just get kids from any, like, you know, private school. Okay, fine, we go to a private school, get 40 kids, bring them in. Now we go to schools like uh, Olympic High School, Amani School, um, kids who don't necessarily have the privilege of having um, a, such camps in their areas. But also on the other end, we go to you know, kids who do have that uh, privilege. So we try to foster a, a, an environment where they could all come in together and share their ideas. And you'd be amazed at what a six-year-old from Olympic High School and an eight-year-old from Strathmore High School, I mean from Strathmore Primary School, could uh, come up with. Um, the fourth, uh, provide a conducive environment to learn through play. Uh, learning through play is, has been proved to be very important in the sense, especially for children. You don't, you don't, you don't find that a kid um, automatically knows how to do one plus one. A kid thinks, okay, I have one orange plus one orange, and that equals two. And that's a, uh, an essence of play as well. Um, and the fifth, uh, which is the final one, is to develop uh, a platform that anyone anywhere else could use. Uh, so going to 2015, we're looking to put in a Creative Commons license, which is this legal thing that sort of says, okay, fine, we, you can use this and remix it, make it your own thing, but it just means you also have to tell us that you, about the work you're doing and share it with other people in the same way. Um, these are just a couple of pictures from our past camps, and they pretty much embody what we're trying to do. Um, we have kids who work with uh, robots, so that's a kid in uh, our August camp last year, and a guy made a robot from scratch, well, scrap metal, scrap gears, uh, motors that he found in the scrapyard as well, and put it all together to make a robot. But the idea is that you can connect mentors, and either university students, you connect mentors like them to students to get them to aspire to do more, right? Um, and these are figures. Uh, so to date, we've had five camps. Uh, we had our first in August, and the last one we had was in November. Um, and they pretty much tell a story of their own. But the key point would be in April, because in April, that's when um, we, we reached a turning point, per se. Um, we got it pretty much optimized on the number of kids that we had, plus the number of trainers that we had. And we got a good ratio of one to three. And at that point, that's when we looked at how do we properly um, create a sustainable platform to push this, uh, the camp. Uh, and that's when we began discussions with uh, the team at Waza Experience uh, to combine the two platforms together uh, into something more formalized going into 2015. Um, you'll be hearing more about that later on. Um, yeah, um, these, before there were quite a few findings that I had put up on this, but I felt I really needed to drill them down to the main two. Um, and the first was the importance of interest-based learning. And it, pulls, it ties back to Anne's point about um, you know, all being examined on the same things, math, science, English, Swahili, even given the fact that you have different interests. Your interests may lie in the arts. If you're not examined in the arts, then where will you, what will happen to you? So we look at, okay, fine, we're going to get kids. We need to understand what the kids like. So we hold these uh, make or break it days, that's what they're called, where we get all the kids together and we just you know, give them a bunch of set projects. And the idea behind that is to understand what each kid likes. So you're able to identify, you know, Mark there looks like he likes um, the crafts. 
Um, Lisa there looks like she likes electronics a bit. Ma uh, Michael might like programming. But they just to categorize them prior to the camp so that you're able to more effectively um, help their learning during the camp itself. Um, we also look at peer learning. You're looking at co-education, sustainability, and mentorship. And we found that these are very key to interest-based learning. Um, the second point is objective review. And this is where you get to reflectively look back on the work you're doing and be able to assess what's working and what's not working. If you don't have this in your system, this feedback, then you're pretty much doomed, right? <laughs> um, but what we're looking at here is independent sources of review, uh, participant observation, and trainer debriefs. Um, so sources of review you're looking at platforms like TEDx as well, because this is a place where we could get to our share ideas and hear back from you. As much as this is a platform made in Nairobi, how could this be made to apply to a place like uh, Rusinga and Bita in general? Um, we also look at participant observation. Uh, so during the course of the camps, we always make sure to get researchers from IHUB Research to come in and um, they apply research methodologies to understand the progress that kids go through. So you're looking at how well does a kid relate to other kids? How well does a kid relate to their mentor? How well does a kid relate to the content they're being taught? So they sort of fill in a scoring rubric that helps us to understand where we're failing and you know, the places that we're actually successful in. Um, and the train of debriefs. And this is also very important because this is you talking to your teachers to find out what they feel works and what doesn't because they have a better feel for that sort of uh, knowledge. Um, and uh, looking ahead, what do we intend to do? Um, so in 2015, uh, we were doing a pretty new big thing, combining with the WASA Experience program, um, where we're trying to make this a year-long program. Prior to this, it was held every school holiday. So it was April, August, November, every, every year for the past 18 months or so. Um, but now we're looking at how do we then make this a better platform. And one of those things we've identified is monitoring and evaluation. So how do we make sure that the kids are actually gaining as much as they thought they would going into the camp as opposed to not coming to the camp? Um, and uh, the second is improve sustainability. And this is a big question. I know that to be true for Mbita as well. How do you ensure that sustainability is ingrained into the platform you're trying to build? Um, and with that, we're looking at possible corporate sponsorships through IBM or Oracle. Um, a lot of companies in Nairobi are willing to support such initiatives. Uh, but beyond that, how do you make it so that the program can run on a community-based level? So that's a question we're asking ourselves this year as well. Uh, and the mentorship program. The mentorship program uh, is specifically tied to the university students that we get to act as mentors to, our, to the kids who attend the camp. Um, and with this, um, what, we primarily, what we started doing actually in April was to get the mentors and trainers to come in for these workshops where they'd learn about the do's and don'ts of teaching kids and how best to approach a situation, that sort of thing. But the idea is to get them into the mindset of thinking at, like a mentor and not as a lecturer in the front of a room giving out formulas. Um, and the fourth, which is the last, um, I feel I'm being told I'm short on time, but the last is how do we scale the platform? Um, and that's in regards to one, our license, um, so right now we're still, we're not entirely sure about which license to use, uh, but in the next few weeks we should be. And two is on the partners and practitioners that we could collaborate with to push this platform forward. Uh, and that ties back also to our sustainability. And um, I think uh, with that, um, I'm pretty much done. Um, I think we are done. But I'd just like to say thank you, one, to the school, to the organizers and to the, all of you for coming through. Um, the next camp in Nairobi will be held uh, from mid to late April, um, but more information can be found on uh, www.wasexperience.org. Failing that, you can check out IHUB's website, ihub.co.ke, and uh, there will be a knowledge repository that will be left open uh, in the coming months with all our information, so you could read off of that and use our work to enable you to do more. Yeah. Thank you.